one of the biggest questions I get from people all the time is, you know, they talk about we bring people all these different techniques, methods, strategies, all this cutting edge stuff that a lot of people have never heard before. But when you actually take it and try it out on your own, it makes sense. And a lot of people find themselves saying to themselves, hmm, wow, this stuff is pretty good. I would love to start using it, but how do I work it into my current routine? You know, the average person, if you're lucky, you got about 30, maybe 45 minutes to work out three times a week. You got to worry about your upper body exercise. You got to worry about your lower body exercise. You got to worry about your stretching, your cardio, your actual weight training. Um, if there's any kind of skill work you got to do, you got to fit all that crap in, in those three to four half hour to 45 minute sessions, all right? And there's a lot to do for a lot of people. So I wanna to talk to you guys today about some of the ways that we've found are successful for people being able to take the stuff we go over in these videos and add them into what you're already doing so you can make it not just part of your lifestyle, you can make it part of your routine and keep it in there for the long term. Well, everybody seems to have their own different kind of routine and workout and yes, while I understand everybody's unique little snowflake and we all are one big ray of sunshine and we all have our specific stuff, typically when you break it down, we all come to the same like seven or eight base models of what we're working out. And we're gonna go over all those, all those right now. So the first we're gonna go over, the single exercise circuit. Now, with your single exercise circuits, this is pretty easy, right? You have one exercise you're doing and you're not doing anything else. This is more like a lot of typically the power lifters, right? You go in, you do your set of squats, you take a minute or two break, you go back, you do your set of squats again, and you do that till that exercise is done, and then you move to the next exercise, then you do the next exercise. Let's take a look at deadlifts, right? A great way you can take one of the exercises, like the rope training we were talking about the other day, you add it in so in between your sets of deadlifts, when you're resting, you just do some kind of mobility work or movement-based exercise. Nothing that's gonna kill you for the main exercise you're going on, but it'll keep you loose, it'll keep you warm, and it'll keep you mobile. So if I'm doing deadlifts, like when I do my deadlifts, because my back is shot, I'll do my deadlifts, and then in between sets, I'm gonna grab the rope, and I'm gonna do my rope training. Loosen up my spine, keep everything nice and mobile, and I would just have it in between to help keep me as I'm going. Now the second way of working out, you dual exercise or opposing muscle groups, all right? This is typically the same thing as the single exercise circuit, but now instead of one exercise, you're going back and forth between two. A lot of people will do, like for their legs, leg extension, leg curl. Or if you're doing an upper body circuit, you'll do like dumbbell chest presses and then maybe you'll do a cable lap pull down. And you jump back and forth between those two exercises. Really simple to do for that one, you just add a third exercise into that circuit. So let's say you're doing an upper body based day, right? You got your dumbbell chest presses and you got your lap pull downs. Dumbbell chest presses, lap pull downs, and then maybe I would take the rubber band, so I like to went over for the one day we were talking about band walking, and in between sets of my chest and my back, I would do my band walking, right? Let me work in some of that stuff that I would normally be do that I normally wouldn't have a chance to do. Right, keep the knees bowed out, work on the glutes, but it's nothing that's going to take away from the strength of my chest and my back, and it's a very easy exercise to drop in. Third one we're going to go over, a three exercise circuit tier. This one's going to be very similar to the, way, the one we were talking about before. Um, anybody who's ever worked with a personal trainer before or taken any of the workout DVDs, like from Beachbody, uh, Insanity, P90X, um, there's so many out of there, I can't even think of them right now. But anybody who's worked with a trainer or a coach any way, shape, or form, this is typically the way a lot of us do our programming. And the way the three-tier circuits work is you'll have your main exercise, which is typically your hypertrophy or your strength exercise. Let's say you want to do upper body, so that would be, let's say, dumbbell overhead presses, right, would be your first exercise. Your second exercise would be something more functional-based. So if I'm doing it, one of the circuits I did with one of my clients this morning, right, dumbbell overhead seated press, and then for the functional exercise, I would do a landmine rotational clean. They're pulling the bar up and down, so I'm working the upper back and the shoulders and the posterior, the back side of the chain of the body, but I'm not doing anything that's gonna affect the shoulders. So now I have my bodybuilding exercise or my strength training exercise, whatever one you're plugging in there for the first one. I have my second exercise, which is my functional exercise, and then my third exercise would typically be something core-based or cardio-based, right? It might be doing 30 to 45 saiyan sprints at the treadmill. It might be doing box jumps. I might be on the ground doing some kind of like side oblique crunch or some kind of leg raise. Something else besides from the bodybuilding exercise and the functional exercise. This scenario is really simple. You would add in one of these movement or mobility based exercises like RMT club swings, maybe the RMT rope, maybe some of the rotational hip motions we do as that third exercise and you would just go through the circuit. Exercise one, exercise two, exercise three. 
exercise one, exercise two, exercise three. And you would just keep going. You're just swapping out one of those other, I don't want to say less important exercises, but the exercises that aren't the focal point, you would just swap those out for one of the ones you have to add in there. And wraps, chippers, Tabatas. So a lot of my CrossFitters out there, you guys can appreciate this one. A lot of my people out there who do different types of like online classes, like the Zoom classes, which we've all had the pleasure of suffering through during the lockdown. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is the obvious one. If you're designing your own air wraps, chippers, and tabatas, you can make that exercise. Like you guys have probably guessed, I'm a big fan of band walking, the RMT clubs, and the, and the ropes, because they get your heart rate up, they give you a good burn, and it actually feels like you're doing a real exercise. You're not sitting there doing like some kind of stretch, and you're like, okay, great. I know I should be feeling this, but like, you know, this, this is stretching, this is kind of annoying. I know I need it, but I don't like it. It lets you feel like you're actually getting something done. So you can either one, make it as part of your actual circuit for the AMRAP, the bottom or the chipper. Or number two, the way I do my AMRAPs when I do my classes, I'll have an AMRAP for the first 15 minutes. Like let's say it's a lower body based AMRAP. Body weight squats and power crunches, as many as you can get in 15 minutes. My second AMRAP might be pull ups and wall balls, right? I'm gonna finish the first AMRAP, and before I start that second AMRAP, I'll take three or four minutes, and I'll do some kind of mobility or movement-based or correctional exercise. Like, I would do a couple sets of the rope as active recovery, or if my back's tight from all those bodyweight squats, maybe I would do some kind of mobility-based stretching lunge, like we're gonna show you in some of the other videos, to loosen myself up. So you can use it in between rounds of the AMRAP chippers or Tabatas, or just make it part of the circuit itself, right? I got this great workout I did today with my people. It was 30 calories on the assault bike. Then we did a couple dynamic stretches down and back. The first one we did was walking hamstring kicks. Took like two minutes, right? Went back, did another 30 calories. I think we went to the rower after that. And then after that, we did rope rotations. Then we went back, we did another 30 calories. This time we went to the rower. And then we did walking quad stretches. We grabbed the quads, gave it a quick tug on the back of the leg. And we were supersetting basically Cardio to get the heart rate up and get you breaking a sweat with the mobility and movement based stuff to loosen you up. And by the time we were done, everybody was saying, wow, that was a really great workout and I feel good because now they were finally loose. We just took the mobility boring stuff and we put it in with stuff that's actually easy to drop it into. So that's an easy way to add into your AMRAP, chippers, and the bottles. It really just depends on what your actual programming is for that day. So cardio based style circuits. This one's really simple, right? So one of my favorite workouts, for those of you guys who downloaded the Ignite program, right, you probably saw the treadmill workout where we have, where we do 60 seconds of the treadmill as a sprint, then we come off and we do some kettlebell cleaning presses with our kettlebells, right? Well, same concept, just swapping out the exercises. What I would do, I would do my 30, I'd do my 60 seconds sprint on the treadmill, right? I would come off, I would do my kettlebell cleaning presses, and then maybe I would add some club rotations in for that third exercise, I would jump back in the treadmill again. I would do my cardio on the treadmill. Maybe it's for a minute, maybe it's for two minutes, maybe it's for three minutes. I would jump off, do my weight training, and then add my rope rotation training in there. You can add it in as the actual workout itself, or like the chippers and wraps and the tabatas, you can just do little mini sets, and before you go from little mini set one to little mini set two, you get off, you do some of your corrective exercise stuff. We like using the go to blocks, so when I do a lot of my running, I'll stand on the wedges, you'll see the slam boards. They, they help put your feet in the right position so you're able to actually move in a way that helps activate the glutes. I would just do a crazy number of squats, 40 to 50. And then when I'm done and I go to get back on the treadmill again, now I'm running more through the back of my glutes, all right? And then heart rate based workouts. These are for all you guys who like, people who come from like the Orange Theory method of working out where you're trying to just go based off your heart rate. You could take all these different exercises. Like if you get good, at the figure eights, right? I don't know if I'm gonna have room to do this one inside of here, but drag and roll switches, right? So I'm gonna start with my drag and roll, right? And as I'm going with my drag and roll, I go with the rope and I'm jumping back and forth as I go side to side. It's a lot of rotation, a lot of landing mechanics in there. I would do that for either reps, 50 to 100 reps, which is a lot, or I would go for time. 30 to 60 seconds on, 20 seconds off. 30 to 60 seconds on, 20 seconds off. And I would just go from there like that. So as you guys can see, there's really no right or wrong way to add this stuff in. It's really a matter of just looking at your routine, 
what you're trying to accomplish, what's your desired training effect, and how can you add these in safely to what's already going on. A lot of times, we have a lot of wasted downtime in between our sets and rest periods where you do need to take rest in between your exercises. However, if I'm doing a heavy leg day and I need time for my legs to recover, it doesn't mean I can't be doing something to help open up my shoulder like a club rotation. If I'm doing a heavy chest press day and my chest needs to recover, that doesn't mean I can't go to one of the walls and do some wall driver drop-ins to open up my hip so when I go to leg day tomorrow, my hips a little opened up, my hip flexor is not killing me. Your own creativity is your only limitation with these. And like I said, for those of you guys who like all the concepts we're going over, but this is all still new and you're like, Jay, I don't know how to do the programming like you do. If you're really hung up on it, do me a favor. All my contact video, all my contact information is at the end of this video. Drop us a DM, shoot me an email, shoot me a text message, send a carrier pigeon. Whatever you gotta do, reach out to me, let us know the questions you have, let us know what you're stuck with, and we'll help you out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay in tune for more. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you follow us all across social media. You can find me by searching hashtag the Jason Effect, and stay tuned for more content that we're gonna be putting out each week so we can help you guys out. Thanks for coming today. See you in the next one.